Oh uh, yeah, just in time for season three, let's learn English with the Netflix series, Stranger Things. So in the fun lesson that you're about to watch, the cast from Stranger Things recaps the most important events from season one and two. And just in case you're not sure what that means, a recap is when you kind of retell the most important events from something, you kind of summarize it. So this will be useful not only to practice your English, but also for you to get your mind refreshed on the events of the first two seasons. In her words, Everybody is excited for season three. Us included. But in case you haven't seen seasons one and two, or you just need a quick refresher, we're here to catch you up and get you nice and ready for the new episode. So if you want to watch that full video with all the recap details, you will find that linked down in the description below. And if you're new here, every single week we help learners like you understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. So if you want to be able to do that too, then what are you waiting for? Join us by hitting that subscribe button and the bell down below to not miss a single one of our new lessons. So season one opens in Hawkins where we see a big scary laboratory. Something is clearly going wrong because alarms are going off and lab coat guys are panicking. But the upside down is a mirror world of our own, except everything is awful and creepy and ruled over by hideous monsters of unspeakable terror. But again, Eleven can communicate between our world and the Upside Down, so that's pretty neat. Also, we get some gnarly flashbacks that show us Elle was used in these terrible experiments where she's sent into the black void at the lab near Hawkins. A squad from Hawkins' lab knows about Elle hiding out with the boys at Mike's house. The bad men, as they are called, set out to kidnap her back. Luckily, her superpower mind is able to flip the vans over, which rules very hard. Very, very hard. Now Something is clearly going wrong because alarms are going off and lab coat guys are panicking. If an alarm goes off, it makes a noise to warn you about something. The Upside Down is a mirror world of our own, except everything is awful and creepy and ruled over by hideous monsters of unspeakable terror. The Upside Down is an alternate dimension. This is where Will is locked in season one and where the Demogorgon comes from. Here's where things get really interesting. The flea can also travel this way, along the side of the rope. He can even go underneath the rope. Upside down. Exactly. Upside down literally means that something is in the opposite direction that it normally is. For example, if you are upside down, your head is below your feet. According to Gatton, the upside down is awful and creepy, which is a pretty accurate way of describing it. If you say that a place is creepy, it makes you feel nervous and slightly frightened. Awful is another word for bad, only more emphatic. You can use this word to describe a variety of different situations and things. How come you're not at the feast? That's still my possessions. Apparently people have been hiding them. That's awful. The Upside Down is ruled over by hideous monsters. Hideous means extremely unpleasant or ugly. To rule means to govern. You might find it difficult to rule over millions who want you dead. But in this case, it means that the monster has control over the Upside Down world. We will later see a second meaning of the verb to rule. If we take a look at the pronunciation of this verb, ruled over, we will notice the natural consonant vowel link between the last sound of the verb and the first sound of its particle. Remember that when a regular verb is in the past tense, ed sounds like d, t, or like id. Whether the last sound is a t or a d, it usually hooks on to the next vowel. So we pronounce these verbs as checked out, walked up, stormed over, moved away, called away. Yes, I believe these books have been checked out. You already have five books checked out. My mistake. I just walked up like four flights of stairs. <laughs> I just walked up to you and... And so Marshall stormed over to GMB where he ran into Zoe. She was at our party a long time ago. She moved away, okay? When they ran away from the bus, they were called away. Gatton says, monsters of unspeakable terror. This adjective is used for emphasizing how bad someone or something is. For example, unspeakable crimes, or as an adverb, she was unspeakably cruel. In a literal sense, something that's unspeakable is impossible to describe in words. 
Example, I felt an unspeakable feeling of achievement. Hey, if you like it when you can understand fast speaking natives like in this lesson, then why not try out our premium course Fluent with Friends? It will help you to be able to understand natives at any speed. You can get a free try of that right now with our mini course. Simply click up here or down in the description below to learn more and sign up. But again, Eleven can communicate between our world and the upside down, so that's pretty neat. In American English, if we say that something is neat, we're saying it is very good, pleasant, or enjoyable. That's neat is similar to that's awesome. However, it is less of a degree of coolness than awesome. It'll showcase all the latest equipment as well as how-to articles, which the kids write themselves. <sighs> that's neat. To clarify the difference, if you tell me that your boss liked an idea you shared in a meeting, I might say that's neat. But if you tell me your boss gave you an important promotion, I'd say that's awesome. Here, neat is a bit of a humorous word choice because he is downplaying how incredible Levin's powers are. As you can imagine, if he wanted to be more authentic in his description, awesome would be more appropriate word choice. Munich. Oh, Munich! Munich, Munich is awesome. That also, we get some gnarly flashbacks that show us Elle was used in these terrible experiments where she's sent into the black void at the lab near Hawkins. Gnarly is a slang word that's usually used by young people. When we describe something as being gnarly, we're saying that it is extremely good or extremely bad, depending on the context and tone that someone uses. The void is a visual representation of Eleven's mind. Originally, Eleven could only enter the void when she was submerged in a sensory deprivation tank. However, later her powers grew to the point where she's able to enter the void by blindfolding herself or even just closing her eyes and concentrating. Squad from Hawkins Lab knows about Elle hiding out with the boys at Mike's house. The bad men, as they are called, set out to kidnap her back. You can refer to your personal circle of friends as your squad. In another sense of the word, a squad is a small group of people having a particular task. As Finn says, the squad set out to kidnap Eleven. When you set out to do something, you begin to do something with a specific goal or intention. Example, one year ago, I set out to achieve fluency in English so I could study in a British university. Luckily, her superpower mind is able to flip the vans over, which rules very hard. Very, very hard. To kidnap is to illegally take someone away and make them a prisoner, especially to get money in exchange for the prisoner's freedom, or in other words, a ransom, or to get something else that you want. To flip is to turn something over very quickly. For example, you can flip a pancake. The action of this verb is represented here visually as you can see how the van flips over. Remember how we said rule has another meaning? Well, he says that her flipping the van rules. When you think that something is the best or when you want to show your admiration for something or someone, you could say, for example, this airline rules. It's the best one I've ever traveled on. He rules. If it wasn't for him, the team wouldn't have won the championship. And after Elle makes their eyes start bleeding, which is very cool, the monster smells blood and is off to join everyone at the school. Demogorgon. So the Demogorgon is just busting up stuff, leaving a real mess of bodies and school supplies as the kids run around trying to stop it. In the final showdown, Lucas clumsily tries to find more rocks to slingshot at the monster. Get the rocks! Get the rocks! Get the rocks! Get the rocks! Oh, and Nancy and Jonathan enlist the help of a wacky private investigator, Murray Bauman, and end up hooking up at his weird garage. With help from Bob, who has a real knack for puzzling, Joyce is able to find Hopper and is quickly joined by scary dudes in E.T. looking suits from Hawkins Lab, who begin to burn the tunnel because apparently the monster absolutely hates warm stuff. The monster smells blood and is off to join everyone at the school. When you say that you're off to somewhere, you're saying that you're going to a certain place. We usually use this phrase to announce that we're leaving a place to go somewhere else. Example, I'm off to work. I'm off to pick up Jamie at the airport. Here, the monster is going towards the school. The Demogorgon is just busting up stuff, leaving a real mess of bodies and school supplies as the kids run around trying to stop it. To bust up something means to destroy or damage something very badly. The other collocation he uses here is to leave a mess, which means to make something look really untidy. 
In this case, it's a mess of bodies that the monster is leaving behind, which is another way of saying it's killing a lot of people. In the final showdown, Lucas clumsily tries to find more rocks to slingshot at the monster. A meeting, argument, fight, etc. that will finally settle a disagreement between people or groups. In this case, it's a fight, as the boys in Eleven face the Demogorgon. Is it, is it, is it dead? A slingshot is the weapon that the kids are using here as they try to defend themselves from the monster. And Nancy and Jonathan enlist the help of a wacky private investigator, Murray Bauman, and end up hooking up at his weird garage. Wacky means funny in a slightly crazy way. We often refer to something or someone as wacky who's bizarre, unusual, and silly. Nancy Wheeler, Jonathan Byers, you two are a long way from home. Some examples of wacky are some theories about space sound wacky, but are widely accepted by many scientists. He's a wacky character. To hook up with someone can have many different meanings. As seen here, when you say that two people hooked up, it is a vague way to refer to that they were together romantically, which could be making out or having sex. However, don't confuse this with another meaning of hook up, which can be to meet with someone. Example. I'll hook up with you at the arcade around 4.30. With help from Bob, who has a real knack for puzzling, Joyce is able to find Hopper and is quickly joined by scary dudes in E.T. looking suits from Hawkins Lab. A knack is a special talent or natural skill someone has for doing something. While a skill is often something more general and important, knacks can be more specific, and although admirable, they can also be less useful than a skill. For example, you might have a knack for remembering people's faces or for solving crossword puzzles. Many times we use this word to say in a humorous way that we're good at doing something bad. Example, I have a knack for getting into trouble. For whatever reason, he has the knack for showing up when I'm at my absolute worst. In this case, Bob has a knack for solving puzzles. In one of the episodes, we'll make drawings that appear to hide some important information. While Joyce and Hopper couldn't make sense of what these drawings were exactly, Bob was able really quickly to figure out exactly what they were. It's Lover's Lake. I get it. Okay, I get it. That's Lake Jordan. And if that's Lake Jordan, then you probably find, yeah, that's a uh, Sattler's Quarry. Ha! Ah! Don't you get it? It's not a puzzle. It's a map. It's a map of Hawkins. Do you have any special talents? In the comments below, why don't you practice your English by writing something that you have a knack for? For example, I have a knack for accents. Elle uses her powers to fully close the gate beneath Hawkins' lap. <laughs> bye bye, Mr. Mindflayer. Way to go, Elle. Cut to a month later, where the government finally was forced to admit their role in the death of Barb and Bob, and Hawkins' lab is shut down for good. And as a nice little wrap up for our heroes, all the kids end up at the school's snowball, where Dustin has a, let's say, new hairdo. Elle shows up looking very dolled up to dance with Mike, and oh, they finally kiss. And oh, Lucas and Max are a couple now. Pretty damn cute, if you ask me. Unfortunately, in true Hawkins form, the final shot warns that stuff is about to get extremely real for the kids in season three. Anywho, now that you're all caught up, you're ready to dive into season three. That's good. Bye-bye, oh. Mr. Mind Flayer. Way to go, Al. The Mind Flayer is an evil entity inhabiting the Upside Down. During the second season of Stranger Things, Will is possessed by this creature, giving him several visions of the Upside Down. Way to go is a phrase that we use to tell and show our enthusiasm that someone has done something well. It's amazing. Amazing. It's so great. 
Sadie here says way to go to congratulate Eleven for closing the portal at Hawkins lab and locking the Mind Flayer in the Upside Down. Or at least that's what they think because the Mind Flayer might actually be in our own world in Season 3. Now when Sadie says way to go, she does what native English speakers do most of the time. You know that the American T occurs when a T is between two vowels, as in the words water, Peter, or city. However, this also applies when it's between vowels within a phrase. In the same way, so to speak becomes so to speak. Go to school becomes go to school. I'll try to be there becomes I'll try to be there. I need you to realize becomes I need you to realize. Memory sort of opens up the neurological floodgates, so to speak. You gotta go to school. I try to be there for him, you know, to help him, but... I need you to realize <laughs> I'm on your side. I need you to trust me. Cut to a month later, where the government finally was forced to admit their role in the death of Barb and Bob, and Hawkins' lab is shut down for good. If a shop, school, factory, or business shuts down, or if someone shuts it down, it closes, usually permanently. Example, when the company shut down, hundreds of people were left without work. For good means forever. Long Island, tonight we're moving out there for good. Yeah, here are your spare keys to our new house. And as a nice little wrap up for our heroes, all the kids end up at the school's snowball. To wrap something up means to finish something. As a noun, a wrap-up is what brings something to a conclusion. Example, the boss wrapped up the meeting by congratulating everybody for the success of the company. In this example, the wrap-up of the meeting was the boss congratulating everybody. So, do you hear anything, or...? Hey, Dunphy, just wrapping up a phone call with this jackass. I gotta run, Dunphy, I got a late meeting with some jackass. <laughs> What's going on? Elle shows up looking very dolled up to dance with Mike, and oh, they finally kiss. If a woman is dolled up, she's wearing makeup and is dressed with nice clothes in order to look attractive for a special occasion. This is not a very common expression nowadays. Example, she got all dolled up for the party. Unfortunately, in true Hawkins form, the final shot warns that stuff is about to get extremely real for the kids in season three. You would say, for example, in true Hawkins form, if what you're about to say is exactly as expected or follows the usual pattern in Hawkins. Instead of Hawkins, the town where Stranger Things is set, you can use another place, a person, etc. Example, in true Donald Trump form, he just posted a ridiculous and controversial tweet. In the last episode of Stranger Things, right when it looks like the kids are finally going to get a rest from all the trouble, in true Hawkins form, a new scary turn of events seems to loom around the corner. Now that you're all caught up, you're ready to dive into season three. If you're caught up, it means that you've just learned all the facts or new information about something. After watching this recap, you should be caught up about season one and two and ready to dive into season three. Literally to dive means to jump into water like in this image. In a figurative sense, it means to start doing something in a very enthusiastic way. Example, when I start a new project, I like to dive right in and see how it works. So, how's the lesson going so far? If you're enjoying it, please support our channel by hitting that like button below. And now, we're actually going to watch an interview of the cast on the Jimmy Fallon show. It seems yeah. like you guys like <laughs> bonded so much on uh, all of these uh, seasons. I mean, it's yeah. just kind of yeah. fun because it's like really I could feel specifically the over disobeying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> of course, but yeah. Uh, did you uh, you came in uh, last season? But do you yeah. feel like you're part of the family now? Yeah, I, I feel like I am. I think yeah. I fit yes. in okay. Yeah. I guess you definitely are. I mean, yeah. It seems yeah. like you guys like <laughs> bonded so much on uh, all of these uh, seasons. I mean, to bond means to develop a close relationship with someone. Example. Even though I've known Steve only for a few weeks, I've already bonded with him because we have many things in common. Well, so now do you guys have a lot of big plans? Oh yeah, yeah, no, we're gonna like connect and you know, bond and everything. We also use bond as a noun in expressions like to have a bond with someone or to develop a bond with someone. In one of the episodes, Dustin found a strange creature which he decided to keep as his pet. 
Later, the gang discovers this creature, named Dart, is actually a baby Demogorgon. When they want to get rid of it, Dustin refuses to give Dart up because by then he had already developed a bond with it. So that would mean Dart is from the Upside Down. <sighs> we have to take him to Hopper. I agree. No, no way. If we take him to Hopper, Dart's as good as dead. Maybe he should be dead. How can you say that? How could you not? He's from the Upside Down. Maybe. But even if he is, it doesn't automatically mean that he's bad. That's like saying just because someone's from the Death Star doesn't make them bad. We have a bond. A bond? Just because he likes nougat? No, because he trusts me. He trusts you. Yes, I promised that I would take care of him. Like, really, I could feel Specifically the Specifically over disobeying. Yeah, exactly, of course, but yeah. When you have chemistry with someone, you find it easy and natural to have a friendly relationship with that person. It's generally the case that when you bond with someone, it is because there's chemistry between you and that person. Gatton says that they've developed their friendship, or bond or chemistry, over disobeying. To obey means to do what someone tells you, especially if they are an authority figure. So to disobey is the opposite. It means you refuse to do what you were told to do. Well, well, well. Lucas Sinclair, what a surprise. I thought I told you to stay away from him, Max. Billy, go away. You disobeyed me. And you know what happens when you disobey me. Billy. I break things. <laughs> You came in uh, last season, but do you yeah. feel like you're part of the family now? Yeah. Do you feel like you're part of the family now? Yeah. Do you feel like you're part of the family now? Yeah. But do you feel like you're part of the family now? Yeah, I, I feel like I am. I yeah. think I yes. fit in okay, yeah. I guess. You definitely are. I mean Sadie, who plays Max, says she fits in because she is compatible with the group and feels accepted by them. All right then. We'll have a definite answer for you on Monday. But I think I can say with some confidence, you'll fit in well here. Seeing Manny up there with the misfits and their crazy cakes, I started to wonder if Jay was right. Maybe Manny would fit in better if he was more like the other boys. Interviews like this one are absolutely fantastic for your English comprehension. And we have an entire playlist of English lessons teaching you with interviews just like this one. You'll find that by clicking up here and down in the description below. Without giving away spoilers, can we sum up maybe the, the new season in one word? I thought you could do that and that wouldn't give anything away. We could start with Finn and go all the way down. Can you sum up the new season in one word? Classic. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kayla? Um, you know, gory. Probably, yeah, gory. Sadie? Fun. It's fun. wildly different from... Wait, wildly yeah. Different. yeah. Answer. Gory. gory and fun. Well, Finn is doing more than one word. Uh, oh, you're spreading. Right. What? What? <laughs> spreading? Spreading. <laughs> spreading? Spreading. <laughs> it makes sense, it it makes it sense once you, you see it. You guys know what it means, so no. like, don't protect. It what makes sense do? once you see it. No clue okay, all right, about. spreading. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no. Sad. Oh. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, what a reaction. Sad. sad. I said gory, that's pretty sad, guys. Yeah, classic. Yeah, you're true. Classic and gory off the table, but sad. Now you got me. <laughs> like, like uh, okay, is that? Bigger. Bigger? <laughs> Ooh. That's so tough. Really Can you sum up the new season in one word? Classic. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense is a question we usually ask to see if what we just said was understood. You might use this expression if you are unsure of whether something that you just said in English was correct. I just feel whole. Now, like, a piece of me was missing. And now it's not. Does that make sense? Yes. You know, gory, probably, yeah, gory. Gory means something is full of violence, blood, and killing. Example, a gory horror movie. Yeah, classic. Yeah, you're true. Classic and gory off the table, but sad. Now you got me. <laughs> like, like, if something is on the table, it means that it is a possibility that is being considered. For example, your boss might tell you, a promotion is on the table for you if you keep up the good work. So off the table means the opposite. Finn is basically saying that classic and gory are no longer possible options. No one else liked the answers, but everyone was blown away by such a simple description as sad. 
In this context, if something has got you, it means that you are hooked. That is, your attention is captured. All right, now remember that you can test everything that you learned today by watching the full interview with Jimmy Fallon and the entire recap of the first two seasons, which you'll find down in the description below. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of our new lessons. Give that mini course that I told you about a try and check out these two other lessons that I know you're going to love. Now it's time to go beyond the classroom and live your English. Aw oh, yeah!